my name is Medora Woods and this video is a video of a presentation that I made at a gathering of indigenous people in Phoenix, Arizona. And the topic of the presentation is Western Mind as a Trauma to Itself. The video begins with a very ancient text uh, that we believe is about 4,500 years old. It was originally written on seven clay tablets that were found in the middle of the uh, 19th century. And it is an origin story that I believe tells us a great deal about how Western mind developed. And jubilant. They brought him gifts of homage, they to him. Then the Lord paused to view her dead body that he might divide the monster and do artful works. He split her like a shellfish into two parts. Half of her he set up and sealed it as the sky. Pulled down the bar and posted guards. He bade them not to he bade them to allow not her waters to escape. I understand this story as to be the guiding image of creation for the Western mind. I know there are other stories in the Bible, but this one predates it. And what it says to me is that the hero creates by killing the mother and making the world from her pieces. And so I invite you, as Steve did yesterday, to listen to that image and to hear it behind so much of the truth that you know about how the people of the earth, the people of the earth, the mother, the people of the mother are in the way of being able to kill the mother and make the world of her pieces. This is how we turn sources of life into resources. This is how we turn sacred lands into mines, sacred forests into bored feet of lumber. I hear the story well, this story, etymologically, what we're talking about is materialism and the etymological root of materialism or material is mater, mother. The mother in materialism is dead. She has been carved into pieces to make matter. She's no longer alive. The one who's left alive at the end of this story is the hero. The solitary person, not a warrior for his people, but the solitary man who does amazing deeds and on whom, the idea of whom is the basis of Western civilization. It's the organizing myth. Yesterday I heard that story as Mon Mona talked about the uh, park service and their bulldozers waiting to bulldoze her village if they should stop their vigilance. I heard this story when Nelson was talking about turning ancestral lands into a commodity can, that can be sold in a system of ideas and fantasies and laws that is totally imaginary. And yet, as imaginary it is, as it is, it has taken over all our imaginations. And we think in those terms. What are the rules? What are the laws? Who has rights? Nobody has rights to the land. The people who occupied it for thousands of years, they have as much right as anybody, but it's not a thing. It is land. I think that the invaders of Turtle Island have a particular madness. 
I thought a lot about what Tupac originally asked me, which is think about the doctrine of discovery as a trauma for Europeans. And what I'm trying to say today is that it's a trauma that goes back way, way, way before the doctrine of discovery. But there is a particular young, there is a particular trauma for the people of Turtle Island, the settlers, the invaders of Turtle Island. They have, they uprooted themselves from their ancestral lands, from the bones of their ancestors, from their communities, with the stories of their ancestors and their people, from their families, from their history. All of their histories now begin with, my great-great-grandmother came to this country in, and that's where the story starts. It's as if a whole nation has obliterated its memory of who it is, because we no longer know who we are. I would like to just read a few more words. They're not mine. That I think explain, that to me have explained a lot about the insanity of Euro-Americans. This is a story in front of the name here. This is a story that is told by Jeanette Armstrong. Some of you may know her. I understand she is an Okanagan from the territory that is now either British Columbia or Treaty 6 territory. I think I've got my treaty right there. She's trying to explain how inadequate English is, as so many of you said yesterday, to talk about the reality that I'm talking about. And this is, a, it starts with a story from her childhood. As a child of 10, I once sat on a hillside on the reservation with my father and his mother as they looked down into town on the valley floor. It was blackberry season and the sun was warm, but he, there in the high country a cool breeze moved through the overshading pines. Blueberries and canaries darted, bluebirds and canaries darted and chirped in nearby bushes while a meadowlark sang for rain from the hillside above. Sage and wild roses sent their messages out to the hummingbirds and the pale yellow butterflies. Down in the valley, the heat waves danced, and dry dust rose in clouds from the dirt roads near the town. Shafts of searing glitter reflected off hundreds of windows, while smoke and grayish haze hung over the town itself. The angry sounds of cars honking in a slow crawl along the shimmering black highway and the grind of large machinery from the sawmill next to the town rose in steady, steady buzzing overtone to the quiet of our hillside. My grandmother said, translated from Okanagan, the people down there are dangerous. They are all insane. My father agreed, commenting, it's because they are wild and scatter everywhere. I remember looking down into the town and being afraid. 